All right, welcome everyone. It's Tuesday, uh, Tuesday, June 29th. I can't believe we're already approaching July. We're through the pandemic finally, and California has reopened and we're able to enjoy uh, indoor dining. We're able to enjoy all the businesses, going back to get our haircuts and uh, all the good stuff with uh, not wearing masks. However, the issue is they're still called the Delta COVID variant which is kind of still spreading itself throughout Los Angeles. So I still encourage you, even if you're vaccinated, uh, help prevent the spread, wear a mask regardless of which, although it is technically not required when everyone in the building is um, uh, vaccinated. Uh, but just because it's the bare minimum doesn't mean you can go above and beyond in helping prevent the spread. So I uh, had a couple of things I wanted to share with you. I know Michael here on the call wanted to know a little bit about listings and how we're gonna get listings and about the presentation and how to consult the client properly. Michael, I wanna point you to one great area that I've been kind of focusing my classes and you might've missed uh, uh, one of my past recent classes regarding uh, how to get a listing and how to win against your competition. In, uh, wait, this is not me. <laughs> Hold on one second. So uh, this is my channel here on uh, my YouTube channel. Uh, type in YouTube, Kelvin Chang. And Michael, for your purposes, I want you to watch this class here, which is how I beat three Arcadia top agents in getting my new list listing right now coming soon, 1720 Wilson Avenue, Arcadia in Highland Oaks. It's gonna cover what I used to go in detail, how I uh, presented my unique value proposition, and I gave them comp top you know, 15 compelling reasons why you should use me as your broker. Um, and then uh, prior to that, uh, I did give what's called how to properly give real estate consultations. Oh, no, no, I'm sorry, Michael. Uh, this class here called Mastering the Listening Presentation. I gave my exact presentation for three recent listings that I conducted uh, this year, how I was able to separate myself and I used uh, a couple of different strategies that you're gonna see is my style. And it seems to be very successful. People like that I'm a little bit more detailed and that I have a lot of knowledge to share. So I feel that uh, watch this, give them a little market update, consult them and give them education and make it fun while you're in front of them. Because at the end of the day, price is one thing, like it's not always about how much commission you charge. A lot of times it has to deal with, do I like this person? Are you uh, in professional? Are you responsible? Do you communicate frequently? And a lot of times they're gauging, do I want to spend the next three months working with this individual? And some people who have a negative personality or they're very hard to reach or, you know, some, some people, you know, one of the things that separated me was they liked a top agent, Arcadia agent that they interviewed with. However, uh, they had the impression and they said, oh, they have a, a staff or a TC or assistant that's gonna be helping communicate. And they didn't want that. They didn't want to be pawned off to a uh, assistant or this and this. They wanted to reach through to you, the realtor. So that's something that I promised to them. I said, look, I, I, I do, I've been doing this for a long time. I know how to do every step of the phase of the way in the listing. And I promise you, I will not be giving you an assistant. You're working directly with me and that's the benefit you're working with me. Uh, so they felt reassured. Not everyone wants to have a big team or have a big, uh, uh, a lot of uh, systems and a, a transaction coordinator that's gonna send them things to sign and not explain things. Some people still like to have the personal touch. The, I'll work with you. We'll spend the time and sit down and go over disclosures and I'll explain this to you. Some people are like that. So you need to be able to gauge which type of personality they are, the client. If they're a business owner, they're a CEO or executive, they're very busy, maybe they don't want to spend too much time with you. Okay. Uh, but if they're more of the normal traditional people, they like to have a relationship 
which is most people, they like to be able to, to call you and you pick up your phone. Uh, that's what I, you know, kind of guarantee to them. I said, hey, if, I am busy, but I never too busy for you. You know, I go ahead and I, if I am in the meeting, I'll call you right back when I'm done. I'll give you a text message courtesy, letting you know when I'll be free. And, and uh, I'll, I'll, I'll always follow through, okay? So Michael, watch, watch uh, this mastering the list, listing presentation and watch how a broker beat the competition. So I'll share with you what I did on my listing and I'm gonna log into my MLS just to give you a little bit of a, uh, a taste for what's going on. Uh, we're doing some prep work, it's coming soon and I'm logging into my MLS to show you my uh, printout and description. And some people told me some things like, Kelvin, why is your description so long? I don't want to read all that. Okay. My answer to that person is you don't have to read all that. It's there for those who are wanting to read my descriptions. And so <laughs> if you want to take a look, uh, I'm already uh, giving you the setup that I wrote a very descriptive. This is not my property. I wrote a very descriptive um, description because I wanted the people to know all the benefits and features and uh, possibilities of my of this property. So it's a nice single family residence with a nice back, big backyard and mountain views in Highland Oaks. Well maintained and um, definitely has a lot to offer. Uh, where can you find a, a four bedroom, 3000 plus square foot home under 2 million? You know, not very much in this neighborhood in Highland Oaks. So I wrote a very strong description to me. Um, I got the approval from the owner and they loved it. They, they really uh, gave me a positive feedback and saying, you captured everything we wanted to capture. And they just gave me some clarity items like describing uh, a tree house for kids, a sandbox, tetherball pole, how many types of trees they have in there, like a fig, mango, avocado, orange, and peach trees. So they just gave me some extra items to add, which made it longer. But at the end of the day, I just want to let you see and read what uh, I think is a proper description. Not necessarily to share everything, it's to invite them in and say, wow, it has so much to offer. I should make sure me and my family check it out. Okay, that's the whole purpose. You want to attract them to come in. That's the whole purpose of your description. Not just to say it's four bed, three baths, uh, nice home, beautiful location. Okay, that's what everyone writes but there's definitely features for every single home, even if it's a fixer upper, there is potential. There is uh, things that you can share that will want them, attract them or attract investors. You gotta know who is your target. And for my purposes, the target is for a family or a, you know, uh, people who wanna have the privacy in a big backyard, private location in a prestigious neighborhood. So I'm not targeting investors or builders. I'm targeting the people that uh, could uh, give, you know, full price offers. That because people who are gonna live there to enjoy as a primary residence are the most likely people to uh, purchase at the highest price, right? Investors always want to get a deal or below market. So. That's what I'm doing is check out my open house. It's coming this Saturday, 11 to three o'clock. And if you have any clients for this, I, I do definitely think this is one of the best in Highland Oaks in terms of value. Now, to go to Jean's question, she was asking about a rental property and there's so much items of concern regarding notices, how to evict a tenant, how to structure the lease properly. Do you guys see my screen right now? I am logging into the CAR website. Yes. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Now, in today's day and age, there are a lot of misunderstanding regarding procedure for tenants. And I, I want to start from the ground up from the beginning to structure your leases the right way. Okay. And everyone tells me, oh, how much notice do I have to do for this or that? And I'm just gonna have to say, everything is depends on who is the owner type and the type of property and then the local uh, city neighborhood 
where it's located because I can't tell you an answer without knowing background. So what do you mean by that, Kelvin? I'll tell you what I mean. So I'm bringing up the contract. Do you guys see the contract in front of you or is it still not? Because I, I got to pop up. We don't see anything yet. Okay, let me share it again. Okay, now you see my zip forms? Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah, Rashi, thanks so much. All right, so I'm just gonna go into my MLS real quick. I'm gonna go look for a lease that I wanna write up, okay? And it'll help me populate it very simply and easily. So my office leases. All right, we have a nice listing here in San Marino. This is listed by Margaret Lee. And I'm gonna use hers as an example. So let's go ahead and pull this up. So what I wanted to do is say my client wants to lease this beautiful mansion in San Marino, fully furnished. One suite downstairs, formal dining room, blah, 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 blah. Lots of great stuff and a big 20,000 square foot lot. Uh, very, very attractive. Now, if I'm gonna write the lease up like this, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and pull up my zip forms and start sharing with you what I would do. Okay, now the first thing I do is I go to MLS Connect. I want to categorize this as a residential lease, put in the MLS number, which I copied already. And I'll go ahead and find the data of the property, the agent and all that stuff to import all of that data that's uh, uh, already in the MLS to make my job easier so I could be more efficient. Today's date is June 29th and the landlord's name I mean, I'm, I'm going to show you, you could go to the realist profile. I'm just going to call it landlord Larry. And I'll go ahead and call the tenants. Um, I don't know, tenant Tom and tenant Salad, as well as their children. Kelvin. Do you think it will be help like if they have additional uh, person live in the house and then we have the, what is the charges right now is, is allow the landlord to put on the list. I, I can't uh, say that again. Like, like if they have five people, right? On the list, but if the landlord find now like, like they have more people live overnight very frequently, so in case for this, and then we need to put on the list and say, if you have any additional people live like over a certain time, they have to charge like 100 per head or 50 per head, can we do that on the list? You could if it's uh, mutually agreeable. Um... Yeah, but where, where is the location we can put it? Right here. So, well, you told me about executing a lease. And if you're executing a lease, you would ask the tenants who is Tom and Sally, let's say their husband and wife. Uh -huh. okay. So I'm gonna say tenant Tom and tenant Sally, along with their children, John and Dan, and then also their parent-in-laws, Dan and Mary mm -hmm. Smith. I just putting in some random names, okay? Okay. So that's, that's where you can name the people who are gonna be living there. Yeah, uh-huh. Okay? Now, you are asking another question, which is, what if uh, the children, John, and his girlfriend wants to live there now, mid-lease? Uh -huh. Is that your question? I don't know. The if question front, is- Then you should put it up front up here. No, no, no. The question, the question is, right now on this list, we have so, so, uh, such person, right? 
So, so like maybe in the future, they have more people live there and we have to put something like, make sure they don't have extra people live in this property other than all these persons. Okay, so 1B is where the people who should be named that are living in there mm -hmm. as a tenant, okay? Yes. Now then, if you're talking about, well, I wanna protect the landlord, is that the case? Then I will go ahead and use other terms or put it in an addendum. In this particular case, I'm gonna put it in an addendum because I think you guys are gonna have questions. So if, in, in, if, if you wanna do what's called rules, then you would use an addendum. Okay, because mm -hmm. this is a rule you're asking me. So I'll put together a rule. Oh, okay. Okay, because I think we're going to have some other rules that we're going to in here. Okay, tenant, tenants. I'm writing some stuff out. Okay. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. That's good. Uh huh. <laughs> Tenant to open landlord and request for proof of consent. consent. Well, cool. Yeah. Huh? The individual. Is that something like you're talking about? Yes, yes, yes. That's good. Uh huh. Yeah. They shall not be named or classified. Something like that would be what I would write. And I would probably add a little bit more just to probably provide more detail based upon mm -hmm. whatever. Yeah, that's good. Uh -huh. but this is something that I would write up. Okay? Thank you. Yeah. And if you guys have other questions or things that you want to throw at me, I, I could, you know, because I've been doing this for so long, I, I could write stuff like this and think about outside the box issues. Okay. Now, mm -hmm. obviously the additional tenant occupant adds to liability and that's why we want to preclude this however we know that maybe teenagers have a or a 20 year old might have a girlfriend and all of a sudden they move in and this and this and that uh, i didn't want to label them as a tenant i'd rather name them as okay yeah got now, it thank you uh there is personal property in this particular home that it's fully furnished so then in the addendum, I would write language that is fully furnished, uh, additional security deposit of this and this to, to cover the furniture. I would name, you know, the list of items like A, B, and C. I have an inventory list and the condition and a photo of each uh, uh, 
property that's on there, furniture, and this and this and that. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, now, because I don't maybe not be familiar, tenant to verify and adhere to any all. Because San Marino might have a lot of different fishy stuff or you can't run a business or this and this and that on your property. There might be some things. So you might add some language that the tenant to verify and adhere to any and all the local ordinances or rules or policies. You could throw that word language here. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to put together a lease ending in June 30th, maybe a one year lease ending in 2022 mm -hmm. at uh, 12 p.m. And then in this case, I think it was 6,500 per month due on the first and uh, the rent shall be paid. Let's say I just want a cashier's check or wire. Actually, some people just want to wire to their account. So I just choose wire and deliver to landlord's name. And I put their information here, right? Now the security deposit, we all know that it's a maximum of two months security deposit. But when it's fully furnished, you can maybe get away with three months or whatnot, depending on the type of furniture and this and that. So uh, in this case, I'll just go ahead and put it as a $10,000 security deposit, uh, transfer to the owner. That's about one and a half months and never check the broker's trust account. We, I don't want to hold any tenants security deposits. It should be always to the landlord or the property manager. And then moving funds, we definitely want a cashier's check. And then the rent from, I mean, this is not rocket science, but let's just go ahead and fill it out like as if we were really working this transaction. Okay, because I, you know, the rent was 6,500. The security deposit was $10,000. Uh, I'm gonna put a pet deposit of 300 bucks. Yeah. And maybe a garage. Yeah. key remote deposit of uh, 250 to cover my garage remotes and my uh, keys. And then date due, let's say I want to do tomorrow. Uh, I just put the same thing, okay? Now, the other thing is, and then don't forget to specify who you want it to be named to. So you can name it to the company or you can do a split check, one to the uh, landlord and one to, your, to the company or one to the landlord, one to the company, and one to the other size company, like the tenant rep, okay? So I'll go ahead and fill this out. And then for all, just imagine all of them are Cobalt Banker Dynasty, okay? Now, late charge, uh, you can do whatever you want. I, I just put 3% or $50 or whatever you want. Parking, um, garage, and driveway only. San Marino does not allow street parking. Okay. Right? Yeah. Storage is permitted as follows. No outside storage allowed tenant to uh, 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 something like that, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, combustible, yes. flammable materials is, you know, I don't want them to be running any of this or this. And um, utilities. Okay, tenant pays for all of those utilities. I'm not gonna change anything like that. And uh, let's say it's a single family. So normally I just say, here's, I put this in, I'd like the tenant to supply me a memo and I could just check all four of these if I really wanted to. 
make the tenant have some responsibility, right? Okay. Now yeah. let's say the landlord takes care of the landscaping, which is normal. Um, uh, if it's automatic sprinklers, maybe you want to throw the tenant shall water the garden landscaping or whatnot or whatnot. Uh, but in, in any case, maybe the landlord shall maintain it. Okay, that's typical. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Tenant shall maintain, and it's negotiable, but tenant shall maintain the gardener maybe. But it's also, uh, not the gardener, I'm sorry, the pool man. Okay, but normally it's a landlord responsibility. Okay, but you, it's negotiable, so you could throw it in here if you wanted to. Okay. And yeah. Okay, maybe they have their maybe they're they're uh, leaving behind the refrigerator and the washer and dryer. So sometimes I want to state that, and I would probably because there's not enough space here, I would normally write this in the addendum. Okay, so mm -hmm. like I just said before, if I wanted my addendum because I feel like we're gonna uh, as a lesson, we should just put all the rules in here. Okay, because this is where you can feel free to uh, write lots of different terms. Pool equipment and maintenance shall be, shall be uh, tenant responsibility. Tenant to keep water at least nine. Okay. Sometimes I've seen situations where they say the tenant says, well, I don't want all this landscaping in this garden and I don't want to be paying for all the water bill. It's a big backyard. It's going to add $100 to my water bill. So sometimes I, I talk to the landlord. I say, look, when it's vacant, how much is the water bill every month? And they're going to say, oh, yeah, the, the, the landscaping takes up maybe $70 a month on average. Then I say, well, landlord will supply. credit Something like that would work. Yeah. Uh, and then I put some duties to the tenant. Tenant shall provide a copy of last month's paid bill to, to, to obtain this credit of $70, okay? By a deadline, by the fifth of each and every month. I don't know. I'm just throwing in some stuff that uh, to what's called to be knowledgeable about. Because if you don't write anything about this, uh, smart tenants know that their water bills for a big yard is very expensive. And they don't mm -hmm. know that they're paying for all of this on the water bill. And they go, why? I was gone for a month on vacation. Why is my bill still so high? That's because you have automatic sprinklers, uh, and this and this, and they don't know, or the agent mm -hmm. doesn't know they should negotiate the landscaping, which is technically the responsibility that we put on there, but there's only one water bill for a single family, right? So I'm just giving you some items to learn from because you may or may not be uh, knowledgeable to negotiate for your benefit or for your client's benefit. So I'm just telling yes. you some negotiable items. And uh, list of furniture attached with photos, tenant to maintain owner's furniture with no warranty provided or guarantees, and damages, uh, whatever, you know, you, you could write some stuff regarding what type of furniture or like no water beds or this and this. I mean, I can't give you every single specifics, but um, 
you do want to have some language about not being responsible. Let's say the uh, washer and dryer was included. Okay, something like that as well. Okay. That would uh -huh. cover the fact that if it breaks down or if it needs a simple tune up or maintenance, like a, a lot of times a refrigerator, you got to replace the circuit board because it overheats and over fries up. Who pays for that? That's a $200 refrigerator bill. And sometimes I've seen people put in language something like this and say any repairs uh, uh, under like $150 shall be the tenant's responsibility. Items such as replacing the air filters, light bulbs, uh, service uh, uh, standard service maintenance for uh, AC tune-ups, um, stuff like that. And then you can say other things like uh, toilet repairs or sink stoppages. Wow. <laughs> okay. I mean, That's you can, you, you know, but then again, you know, it, what's, who can say, well, I'll just make the bill over $150 and then have them do this and this and that. It could be get come gray again. So that's where you got it. You can you can add as much language as you want because to me I, I would prefer more clarity than less. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's some stuff. Let's go back to the lease. And unless you have any other questions on that. So when we're going through the lease, uh, I'm going on to page two soon. And uh, you know it has all this stuff. We're on page three. Okay. Uh, I could say something like, what's this for, right? Well, the landlord can say like uh, other, right? This is about condition of premises, okay? I could say uh, garage roof has a minor leak and uh, landlord will not repair the, uh, that section, tenant beware. Okay, or mm -hmm. there are situations where if I go back to the uh, addendum, I might write something like shed in backyard is for owners uh, personal storage. Tenant shall not enter the shed or open this a uh, shed is excluded from the lease and owner has right to access own shed uh once every 30 days i don't know i'm just throwing in stuff that i've i've, I've encountered in my own experience okay now, when you go back to the lease, you can go here and um, go page three. And here's about pets. Uh, some people, maybe this kind of house, they would probably will allow pets since it's so big. Um, and then you attach a pet addendum. Okay, fill it out according to what you want on there. And uh, smoking is not allowed by default. Uh, if you have a bunch of rules, then yes, within one day, and then you're gonna show them or see attached addendum number one for rules regarding the lease. Okay, this is not a condominium, I don't check it. Uh, keys and locks, and I just can give them two keys to the premises, uh, one key to this mailbox and two remotes for the garage, okay? 
and mm -hmm. you can have a, a one key to the back door. I don't know, this, you could fill that out. They have not been rekeyed normally, and there's nothing else to fill out. Uh, I usually do not allow subletting or assignments, so I just leave this blank. And some people do what's called Airbnb and they, they rent out rooms to others. So I would prohibit that normally. And uh, so you, I would specifically write it on that addendum, okay? So in this instance, because I've seen this become so problematic where people rent a nice loft or a downtown location or a, you know, a hot area and they rent rooms for, for a business and their business is Airbnb. No subletting or short-term rentals allowed whatsoever. No Airbnb or any other business activities whatsoever. Only the tenants named in 1B shall be allowed as occupants. Okay? Yeah, sure. Okay. It's okay to repeat yourself too, even though it says it over there. So we're going back to the lease and drafting this up because I want to also spend time on the disclosures and procedures at, uh, on this and this and that. So I'm going to kind of wrap this part up. Uh, tenants obligation, okay. They already have a, a, a duty to remove all debris. You have written notice to the landlord with the forwarding address and a tenant shall uh, complete a professional cleaning and carpet stain, a deep cleaning prior to delivering to landlord vacant. Uh, any other rules I can ask them? I can I can ask them to do other obligations such as uh, landlord has right to conduct a, oh, it's already written here. I was gonna talk about a pre move out inspection. Okay. So you could do this. Um, uh, it's a good idea to do pre move out inspections by tenants request. Okay, so if I'm protecting a tenant, I would say you should conduct this so that you know what areas the landlord will be looking for at the end of the lease for repair, cleaning, or uh, damages that would be charged against a security deposit. But if the tenant does not exercise this opportunity, uh, their right for a pre move out inspection, then basically that means the tenant waives this pre and they're just at the mercy of the landlord deciding what is deductible and not deductible. Okay. So if I'm a tenant, I would, I would exercise this right. If I'm a landlord, I would not remind them of this right. Okay. Um, other stuff in here, like tenant insurance and you want to get like a liability insurance or a, or this and that. So I, I normally would try to check the, check the box and ask them for renter's insurance and to supply a copy. And I'll remind them in paragraph 29 in addendum number one to say tenant to supply a copy of the, land, the tenant's renter's insurance policy premium with the coverage and details for the endorsement within seven days of uh, uh, execution of the lease. Or I can make it subject to and I'll have this supply to me that they will have a, a rent uh, on or before the day they move in as a condition of me releasing the keys. You, you could write your own rules, remember, okay? Because you're exercising this and signing this prior to them moving in. You do need to specify notices of where, so you put the address of the landlord or where they want the mail. Do not send any of the mail to the company. Or I don't want any notices sent here because I don't know who your all your landlord's names or they have a, a non uh, familiar name. It could just go into right out right in and out the trash. So please do not send any company stuff here. All notices should be to the landlord. It never should be your name either because you are not the landlord and or the property manager. 
Yes, uh, thank you. Okay, this property was built before 1978. I'm going to give them a, a lead-based paint. I'm going to give them an earthquake disclosure report and the uh, uh, this and this and that. I like the tenant to be responsible for periodic pest control because sometimes they complain about ants, cockroaches, or mice. And I say, well, you're supposed to be responsible for periodic pest control tenant. Look at item 38B2. When was the last time you got the exterminator out here? When did you call them? When did you get a quote? When did you didn't? Oh, well then you're not maintaining your breach of contract tenant. You should, you should call someone to, to cover your cockroaches ASAP. Right? Yes. Uh, check the box always because you should always be giving an environmental booklet even if it's built in 2021. I don't mind you giving this environmental hazards booklet to sign off and have in the file. It's a disclosure. And then uh, Margaret's the landlord of this. And let's say I'm the agent. It's technically a dual agency. So um, I would just put in Coldwell Banker Dynasty and then put in my name. Okay? With my license number. Because this is going to be a uh, one year lease, uh, I'm going to go ahead and write C attached again, addendum number one for additional rules and procedures. Well, any areas. Uh, property manager, and you put the, uh, don't put any of your information in here. You're not, because you're not a, a property manager. So you go ahead and put the tenant's address or where they want it. Uh, you can ask for a guarantor or not, if they have credit or no credit. And then you just fill in the information in here like this. Got it? Very easy, right? Before I get to the disclosures, yep. which I want to cover, any questions regarding this lease or anything I missed that you want to ask in your situation? Okay, like on this one, real estate broker should be take out every, all the things, right? Also, uh, no, it's yeah. okay to put our address in here. It's okay. Yeah, right here it's okay. Yes, I don't oh, want okay. anyone to put broker information down here. Yeah, okay. This is for property managers. We yeah. Don't, unless your landlord already has, hey, I work with ABC Property Management Company. Go ahead. Yeah. And put their information mm -hmm. in. Yes. Their okay. For the go ahead for the see. bottom there, the the company area can can be our information, right? Our information could be here, yes. Okay. Any okay. other questions, guys or girls? Yeah, for the rent control part. Yes. All right, now that is the disclosure area, so the rent control. Now, yeah. bed bug disclosure is a requirement due to the rise in cases of bed bugs and, and, and whatnot. So uh, tenant agrees to release in the event uh, bed bugs. Now, the question becomes, what happens when uh, there becomes a problem of bed bugs in the house? Well, what happens is the landlord, the tenant shall report the suspected infestations to the landlord property manager by emailing or, or address or the notices. Okay. And the tenant landlord has the responsibility to remediate the bed bugs. Okay, so this is a tent, a landlord expense to pay for it. However, if the landlord wants to get out of this responsibility, they would have to do a bed bug inspection prior to move in to certify that it's clear and free from bed bugs and that any future bed bugs that come to the property would be brought in or caused by the tenant. So if you want to not be ever be responsible for bed bugs, then you pay for a bed bug compliance certificate inspection. Okay? Yeah. Tenant flood hazards. This is basically just saying it is or is not in a local flood hazard area of potential flooding. If you're near a dam or a river or a lake or the ocean, you might be in a flood hazard. But Kelvin, how do I know? Well, you check your property, uh, 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 what's called the uh, NHD report, whether you are in or in, not in a flood hazard area. That is where you can check. Every property has an NHD report. 
every owner should know if they're in or not in a blood hazard area. And if they don't have it because they bought it 30 years ago, then you can always uh, take a look at the area of any property nearby or talk and get a copy or talk to an a NHD rep to just kind of look for you, not run a report. The rent cap is what Jean was wondering about and rules regarding. Yeah, the notice example here. Okay, so the everything, this is where everything I say call, is called, it depends, okay? So if the landlord is just an individual and the property is a single family residence right here, you could be, the landlord could be exempt of any rent cap requirements and the just cause eviction rules. You want to, everyone, landlords would want to be exempt if possible, okay? However, what I'm seeing so many agents, they're putting this together and the landlord is not checking off this box to notify the tenant that they are exempt. So you're signing the form, but you're not checking the box. So then therefore you're declaring, hey guys, here's some information and uh, oh yeah, we're unchecked. So we are actually, the state law of California rent control does apply to us. So you're shooting yourself in the foot when you don't have this check box. How do I check this box? You check the box and you have to meet criteria. The house needs to be with, uh, here are the exemptions. If it's new construction within the last 15 years, it's exempt. So if your uh, house that was built in 2010, you're exempt when you, and you can check the box. Okay, uh, uh, sorry, Kevin. So if we check the box, that means we got the exemption, we can have no rent control, right? Yes. If we don't check, that means they have a rent control. That means you, the statewide rent control of California will apply unless a local ordinance overrides or is more stricter than the statewide rent control, which some cities mm -hmm. are like city of LA and Pasadena. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. So, yes. so when you're putting together this lease, if there's two dwelling units where Let's say I live in one, like uh, landlord Larry lives in the ADU, and then the rental on the main house is a tenant, then that makes me exempt. I'm renting out a duplex or, or whatnot, and I can be exempt as long as I'm living on one of those dwelling units in that, in, on that property, okay? And the third one, which is most people, it's a single family residential unit whether it's a single family home, or if you are a condo or a townhouse or a PUD, that's a single unit. So just my property itself, if it's a single house or single condo, I should be declaring this as an exemption. So therefore I can charge whatever rent I want in the future and not have to give just cause notice or benefits to the tenant, okay? Uh, actually, right now, a lot of uh, city and they do have uh, rent control. Yes. Right? So if although it's a condo or uh, a planning development, so if we have to, to know because the client will ask us, right? When we help them to purchase the, the, the house and then they want to be an investor, so, so they say, uh, is it they have any rent control on this city? So we have to go online to the city and figure it out. But if this, con if this is a condo, so although the city have a rent control still can be exam. Well, you told me two different things. Now, the exemption applies to a single unit, yes. Okay, it could be exempt. Mm -hmm. but if the owner isn't, uh, you said like an investor, corporation, mm -hmm. it depends how they hold title now. Because if they hold title as a commercial landlord, 
And the definition I think is 10 properties or more held by that owner, then they're actually considered to be a, uh, a commercial landlord, uh, you know, uh, whatnot. So they are not exempt, even if it's a single condo. Mm -hmm. So it means it depends on the ownership title. If the okay. corporation or LLC. Yeah, and that depends on, yeah. So the LLC, they would need to find out how many properties they own. So if the LLC own more than two, there will be no exemption or how many? Okay, so I think it's 10. So 10? when we go to the, uh, I'm going to the car website. Oh my goodness, right now. <laughs> that's why I don't want to be, I, that's why I keep telling you guys stop being property managers because there's too much. No, 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 no. When we, when we help the client, it's rules. not the property manage. When we help the client to do the investment, they will have this kind of the question because right now people have money, not, not really doing on the stock side, right? Because they, they, they are, the state at the century like maybe is like like 60 born in 60 or 50 they they like to do all the investment on the on on the house is more safe what they feel right but but if the rent control there and so many uh regulation we need to tell them before they we can buy the investment for them we can buy the property for that. You got what I mean? We need to know okay. the basics. Okay, so. If they buy the house, uh, keep have a rent control, like only like 5% each year. And, and if like 2000 only increase 100 per month. So is it worth for them to, to do this kind of the invest? If like before we, we can raise like maybe 2,000, we can raise up to 2,300, you know, right? If I have a rent control only a 100 per month and then 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 will be, you know, is it a good, it still is, is it still, is it a good investment or not? So we have to let them know instead like we just keep buying and after they, they don't have enough money to pay the property tax. <laughs> Like like have okay. Melrose, rolls all these things right some some investor looking for the new new area the uh protection and guidelines I'm trying to show you okay this is regarding relief I'm not I'm not talking about relief right now um this website is good for sending your landlord to find information uh. Regarding the, sorry, I'm pulling this up right now. It's okay, thank you. You know, too, 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 too many area information and then. Ah. So here is, as of 2019, mm -hmm. you asked me, how do I know which area has rent control? Yes. So I just showed you from this links right here, a call okay. housing is uh -huh. key appendix two. These okay, are the good. cities you need to watch out for. I'll tell you what's local, Baldwin Park, Beverly mm -hmm. Hills, Burbank, Commerce, okay, good, good. Culver City, Gardena, Glendale, uh -huh. Indian, yeah. Los Angeles, uh -huh. Palm Springs, Pasadena. So that means the city not mentioned here, it may not have a uh, rent control, right? These are areas with rent control ordinances. And guess what's, uh -huh. what falls under an umbrella right here? 
unincorporated LA County and West Hollywood. Mm -hmm. Unincorporated, like my, my previous residence was in North San Gabriel. That's unincorporated. So this falls under rent control. It's called statewide rent control. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what about Riverside, the Riverside area? That's a county. Oh, that's Check the county. city. Okay. River city. Yeah, we like like the one in Temecula. It doesn't have it here, right? If it's not on here, then you don't have a local ordinance in place. However, this is last updated 2019. So you gotta mm -hmm. go to the you can always call the city. Do you guys have a local rent control ordinance in place? If mm -hmm. so, can I get a copy of where can I find the language? I see. Okay, okay. got it. Sure, sure. Uh, Kevin, can you share the website? Yeah, here. Landlord, yep. tenant. I'll uh, put it in the chat box and you you save it in your own. Thank you. Um, thank you for, thank you. for asking questions, Julia. And <laughs> here is the link. Okay. And, thank you. So that should be uh, something you sticky to. Keep it in uh, your... Keep it as a browser favorite, okay? Yeah. Now, when you talk about statewide, I wanna kind of just give you an overview. It's really confusing, statewide in, in, in Los Angeles County, you know? Okay, this statute does not apply to most single family residents, provided that the owner is not in a REIT, a corporation or a LLC, where one of the members is a corporation and B, uh, blah, 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 blah. Okay, if it was executed after July 1st, 2020, which is when they started this policy. So if you're held in an LLC, you're, you're automatically now, you're, you apply. It applies to you. You're not exempt. No, LC not exempt. Uh -huh. But if the property is within the last 15 years, then like it's a 2010 built, then you could be exempt. So everything is conflicting. That's why I don't want to give you any blanket statement saying it is or it is not. It, everything is dependent. So I just give them articles to read and talk to a professional and this and this and that. This, this policy began in January 1st, 2020, where mm -hmm. if it is uh, applies to statewide rent control, you have a cap of 5% plus the CPI area for the area index as uh -huh. a maximum rent increase. Okay, good. Okay. Yeah, that's the information and, we need to know. And most people are struggling now. The problem I'm having is, well, my owner is an individual. They don't have other properties. There's no LLC. I'm exempt, right? And I go, you should be if you de deliver to the tenant before July 1st, the notice of exemption RCJC form. And they go, oh, the landlord, I didn't do that lease. I don't think the landlord has it. He doesn't have the RCJC form. Then I'm going to say, well, the the, the language in here says if the landlord failed to give the RCJC form prior to the deadline, then the statewide rent control shall apply. Okay. Like, like the current one, I closed the one in LA. So uh, it doesn't matter. Uh, is it the individual or not? And, and for so long, LA city, they do have a rent console, so it won't be applied anything on this uh, regulation, right? They The more local one, if it's more stricter, that one shall apply, which it is in LA. It's more strict yeah. than this. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, got it. Now, don't worry. If you didn't give that notice, then, well, you, you, you it, don't worry. This is only expiring. It's, it's, it's expiring in 10 more years. So you can raise your rents above the amount after this expires, unless they re renew it. But to me, I don't want to wait 10 years before I, I have to take action on my property. I'd rather have just followed the rules and 
gave the RCJC to let them know. So that way I give myself the options to do whatever I wanted to do with the property. But so many landlords did not do this in California. Mm-hmm. That is new. That's right. Nobody knows. I have did so many videos and emails in about this. So I know you guys know, but a lot of the landlords don't know, or they never met you yet at that time. So that's yeah. why you tell them you should know me because I know all this stuff. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because if this, if this landlord has a single family and they fail to give them the notice of RCJC exemption form, and then now they want to terminate their tenant in an unincorporated area of LA County, guess what? If their tenant is in good standing, they pay their rent, they're following the lease and no breach of contract, you technically have to pay them a no fault, just cause eviction benefit where you're paying them up to about a one month's rent equivalent. The landlord must give them one month's rent to relocate. I don't want that on. I don't want to give my tenant one month's rent to relocate. So I, that's why I gave my tenants the, the form. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, the other situation is, uh, okay, I'll, I'll go to your question real quick. The other situation is, well, can there be something else worked out? And I can say, yes, you don't have to follow the rules if there's a mutual understanding agreement in writing in place. So if the landlord says, well, okay, I'll give you extra time but you must move out by this date, but I'm not gonna give you any compensation or relocation fees. And you agree to waive your rights under the statewide rent control, and you agree to this agreement, then go ahead and put that together and you can have a mutual agreement that will override whatever statewide policies that that failed or not failed to deliver. Okay, who's the question? Yeah, uh, Kevin. Um... If the tenant is out of the uh, lease period and they overstay, and they overstay. yeah, um, I don't want to call it like a, a lease or rental to increase the overstay cost should not be uh, equal to rental, right? Well, uh i know what you're talking about and that's you're you're talking about when a tenant has said hey i'm gonna move out by the end of july 31st and Mm -hmm. and then uh that's when you gave them a notice to vacate and uh you gave them 60 days proper notice and they have been in good standing and then all of a sudden they go oh landlord i can't move out by july 31st i need to stay one more month okay that would be considered a breach of your terms of tenancy because you gave them proper notice. And mm-hmm. the fact is, my, my answer to you was, well, do they have any rights? Okay. And then I, I go, well, the first question is, is the owner a LLC or a corporation? And you're going to say no. And then the, I go, second question is, did you ever provide them the RCJC exemption form? And then you're going to say no. Then I say the tenant has some rights and the tenant's rights have the statewide rent control in there. And whether they exercise their rights or get a consultation from a housing provider that helps tenants, sometimes they get educated that, hey, did, you're ne- you, ne- you, don't, you never got an RCJC. If this landlord is asking you to vacate in 60 days and they didn't give you this notice, the landlord is in breach of their agreement and both of you guys have an argument and you technically should be entitled to one month's rent because they're not exempt. Uh, yeah, they're not exempt. So you're entitled to one month's rent that you should be collecting from the landlord. And they get educated on this and this and that. And that's why I say, I don't want to uh, have any of you guys serving notices on behalf of the owner or doing any property management activities because that opens you up for liability of improper notice, improper notices of the disclosures or failing to meet the, the procedures that are technically supposed to be done. And in your instance, I'll say, well, if they overextend by uh, on the day of the day after July 31st, you do not give them 
uh, opportunity to continue their lease because then you show them compromise or agreement, whether it's verbal or written, you're giving them agreement or a blessing to stay beyond your contracted term. So uh, in, if you're labeling this as in the event tenant overextends their stay after July 31st, rent shall be an extra $100 per day. I'll just probably say that kind of gives them a gray area language that blesses them to stay beyond. And if you don't put some terms in there, like uh, payment shall be paid in advance, or uh, to me, I would just say, if you really want that tenant out, then you send them a notice to vacate, uh, an eviction notice or a breach of agreement. Because the, the breach of not moving out by July 31st is important to capture as a reason for eviction. Okay, does that make sense, Grace? Yes, thank you. Yes, thank you. So I know they want more time, but if you give them an avenue to take more time, you're technically giving them a solution that may or may not be uh, uh, consulted on, I guess, by an attorney. But sometimes people want to work things out and not have to go through the eviction procedure. So it kind of you have to outweigh the pros and the cons. Well, if I evict, I got to pay like 900 bucks and wait some time and then do all this and this. And I could, and then maybe some landlords want to take action because they want to injure or punish their tenant that's been kind of keeping their property hostile. So some landlords will do the eviction because they want to take hostile action. And I don't want to make that decision because when there's hostile action, then there might be retaliation. That opens up a can of worms. They get educated by, or they seek counsel from other realtors or property managers or housing providers that help tenants. So sometimes the best approach might not be hostile. Sometimes the best approach is to come to a mutual understanding. And that's where it becomes great because when you come to a mutual compromise, you're still leaving language for them to breach or to, to stay without the rental agreement in place, but they're giving them time, everything becomes gray. That's why I, that's why I hate California tenant protections so, so tough for us as realtors to work around. Okay. I wish I have all the answers, but I'm telling you where to find the the, the local ordinances, I'm telling you about the policy and then where to read. And then I, many times in the past, I've delivered and emailed the frequently asked questions to landlords, um, which I put somewhere in the drive, I think. So in the Dynasty Agent Resources, if you want to read the rent control area, uh, here's the Tenant Protection Act policy with the evictions and just cause. Just cause means there's two ways you can evict the tenant. And one is with at fault, meaning the tenant has a fault. They breached the contract. They have other people living in there that are named on under 1B. They have a business operating, they're doing drugs or legal illegal activity, whatever it is, those are called uh, what's called at fault. You have a reason to evict them. They don't get protections when they're at fault. But if it's just cause, um, no, at no fault, just cause, that's when the owner plans to sell a property. They're gonna remove it from the uh, rental market. They're gonna occupy for themselves or immediate family member or the government deems this to be in, uninhabitable, or they're gonna demolish this and substantially remodel something with, that requires a permit, like brand new roof, uh, adding a ADU, adding a square footage. Those are all reasons with no fault of the tenant, but the landlord has a right to evict them, but they would have to, depending if they're exempt or not, have to give them one month's rent. Okay, it says it right here. No fault evictions require compensation of one month's rent. Any questions on that? There's other resources in here. There's a fact sheet.
starting July 1st. I sent this out to all of you guys with the links. Uh, for 2020, it was 8.3% in which county is this? Los Angeles. Okay. Um, and then, you know, 8.3, they kind of give you some guidelines here. How does it work? What's at fault reasons? What's no fault reasons? So I would, to me, I don't educate the landlord with the yes or no to all the is this apply or not apply? I say, here's the resources you read your situation. But the important thing to know is whether or not you sent the RCJC disclosure form. How did you hold title? Is this single family or is this a uh, multiple uh, duplex or triplex? Because all rental units like duplex, triplex, quad are all, it all falls, even if you're just a single owner, not an LLC. It applies to all multifamily units regardless. The only exemption was if it's newly constructed within the last 15 years. Okay, here's one in Spanish. And then here is a statewide rent control uh, slideshow that I put together myself. Okay. Any questions on this stuff? I mean, I, I covered all the primary points in RCJC. Do you guys see my slides here? Yes. Yeah. So uh, the new construction exemption is there. Uh, notices of tenant. If you check and click on um, some of these areas, you can share my slides. However, I rather you take out the Coal Baker Dynasty stuff out of there. Uh, but you could you could use this or, or, or help this as a resource and uh, and read the uh, the links. That's that kind of just uh, you know gives you the summary of what you need to know. Okay, and you can always read both of these articles that have all the full language if you want to have everything. Okay. Any questions now for uh, anything else before we wrap up today? I'd be happy to share anything I, I know. Um, there's a lot of unincorporated neighbors of LA County. So you, so, so you may know or find out that you, you might have statewide record control in, even if you're in an unincorporated area. No questions? No more. Okay. I know it's a Thank lot of confusing. I know it's very confusing. Trust me. I get confused yeah. too. Yeah. Yeah. We so need to why... take time to digest it. Mm -hmm. yeah. oh so my that's God. why it's it's great that you guys learned it today. But at the same time, uh, well, this is this is recorded online. So I don't want you guys to be the bad guy. Go ahead and share this video and say, well, uh, my broker taught this about this. And so you could watch the video here or you could uh, read the policy and rules yourself. Here are some resources and uh, give them the links and articles and uh, let them understand the mistakes they made in failing to deliver the RCJC by the, they, they even gave an extension to deliver that too. It was supposed to be January 1st, 2020, but you could give the RCJC by July 1st of 2020. So they gave even additional extension to all of the landlords. I hope they utilize that extension. Oh, crazy. Mm -hmm. It's not new news. It's been in front of us every, especially during that time. Uh, it was it was in front of all of us as realtors. If you were reading your emails. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Thank you. Okay. So again, you are in control of your own business. Read your emails. Look, you know, research and due diligence and learn and, and knowledge. And you're, you're here today. So I know you guys are keeping yourself up to date. So don't blame yourself for not knowing all the specifics or details because it's at the end of the day, it's the property owner who made their own mistakes. Okay. Yep. That's not your fault. You're here to help provide solutions, but you can't fix everything that they made a mistake on because there was a hard deadline and 
And so that's, they should take ownership of their mistakes, not you. You're just here to help provide solutions or potential solutions or find a breach of contract. My, my best bet is find an area where they breach the contract. Usually some tenants are not following every single rule on that agreement. Yeah. If you are my investor, that would be great. You know, most of the investor right now, they make money, they just know how to complain, but they don't <laughs> yep. appreciate how much work we take it out and and, and find a solution for them. You know? That's no, what it, we get hurt. <laughs> when it's a good thing, like they sell a property, make money, it's their 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 it's they they they, they claim, hey, I did a great investment, I made money, this is I did this. Not my they don't give you the praise. When they yeah. lose money or the bad investment, or put yes. a bad tenant in place, mm -hmm. they blame the agent, right? Yes. You know, no, it, we don't. Oh, we never really get the appreciation you love to hear, or this and this and that. But I get it. Just you get it too. Um, understand that's the way people are. Okay. Let's make we have a uh, depression. <laughs> sometimes, we should be in this sometimes. business for enjoyment. It's fulfilling. It's for satisfaction. Uh, if, if you're getting depressed about other people's issues, then don't take that business. Don't let their failures or failures to give notices become your problem. Yeah, I understand. So, yeah, thank you for all your help. And, and yeah. yeah. And this goes out for everyone. Yeah. Why, why yeah. try to make like 5 6% every month of the rent? Let's say the rent's $200, $2,000. Why try to get a hundred and twenty? Uh, what is it? Six percent. Yeah, hundred twenty dollars a month to deal with all this headache, having to understand all this laws, serve notices that are you're not sure this and that on. I don't. That's why property management is not necessarily a a, a business we may you know we really don't need it or want it. Okay. Yeah, you know what? Sometimes it's not because we want to. You know, because the agent they don't have the ethic. So when you refer the customer for them to do the management and after they grab your kind too. And then you have no more business. That's the issue, you know. Sometimes we just provide a service and then hope they, hope they understand like, like we just help out and for future. A lot of the property managers, chance. I know property manager, if you need a referral, they do not do any listings or sales. Okay, that's good. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, we need that because so right now, nowadays so many, so complicated, you know. Just try to, because for my own purpose, like we build up the relationship, help out, and then we can get the listing in the near future. That's it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thanks, Thank everyone. You. Any other questions before we go? Well, you guys all have a happy 4th of July, fun, safe. Um, I make sure you're out there and still maybe potentially wearing masks because I know there's going to be gatherings going on. Um, so just be cautious out there. There's a Delta wave of COVID, like I said. So even if you're vaccinated, you can still get the exposure. Don't bring it home. Don't bring it to the office place. Just protect yourself. If, if you don't know if everyone is vaccinated out there. And uh, talk to your clients. You're going to have opportunities at the barbecues or dinner watching the fireworks, talk real estate, talk about how hot the market is, how interest rates are great, whether it's half, whether a buyer or seller, there's something good to share with them, right? Okay, so that's how you're gonna get good business and uh, don't be shy or a secret agent. Let them know all the good things you're doing. See you guys. <laughs>